the legendary missions of a space exploration golden age became possible by an Ukrainian man who had two names. One real, and the other one was fake. And of course, both are forgotten. Childhood years of Alexander Sergei were not recorded properly, but some believe that the government took away his mother who was a political activist from him when he was five. He was sheltered among his father's math and physics books. But when Alexander turned 13, he lost his father too, and since that time, he was living with his grandmother. Despite all the much hardships, Alexander managed to study in the best Ukrainian engineering school. But just after two months of his arrival there, in the year 1914, he was called for Tsar Army for World War I. In the bloody frontier lines of war, a scientific strategy came to Alexander Sergei's mind for a scientific exploration of the moon. The war was over, but Sergei's hell didn't come to an end with the end of war. After the revolution and Bolsheviks coming to power, Sergei and Tsar's former officers were known as public enemies. Sergei couldn't have peace in Soviet Union. He simply disappeared. When he finally appeared, he was not Alexander Sergei anymore. He took the name of a dead person. He now was Yuri Kondratyuk. He finally published a book that he was dreaming once he was in trenches. But no publisher showed interest. So he published the book on his expense. He wrote this book to whoever could read these pages to build an interstellar rocket. Kondratyuk signed for a grain lifter. USSR lacked metal resources. So Kondratyuk's challenge was to craft a grain lifter just by using a nail. Such a thing was a Stalin's nightmare. After completing grain lifter, they arrested Kondratyuk for sabotage. Kondratyuk was forced to stay three years in a special camp which scientists and engineers were enslaved and were working on country's ambitious projects. Kondratyuk drowned himself in a wind energy project. But still, his dream was exploring the solar system. In that camp, he met Sergei Karlyov. And just like him, he had the dream of leaving the Earth to explore the space. Karlyev is the person who became the father of the USSR rocket project. He wanted to add Kondratyuk's name in his emerging rocket project. But Kondratyuk was severely scared because he thought any change in his condition causes more inspection by KGB and it wasn't clear what they do to him. So he didn't do it. When Germany attacked Russia, Kondratyuk was volunteered for the frontiers, where he was managing communication equipments. His exact destiny is unclear, but probably in one of the February nights of 1942, he died in one of the battles. He was only 44 years old. This was the end of his life story. But it wasn't the end of his dream. In early days of Apollo program, scientists and engineers were trying to find a way that how a rocket can leave the Earth and land without any accident directly on the moon. And to fly again and return crew safely back home. This method is known as direct ascending. And well, it is not successful. It was a dead end for them. Two aerospace scientists kept Kondratyuk's dream alive. They passed his 40 years old handwritings to John Hubold, to whom who reads this and makes the interstellar rocket. First of all, to do something like this, 
don't let doubt scares you. NASA took Kondratik's idea of Moon Orbiter and went on a long journey to the Moon. But Kondratik's thinking horizon was beyond this. He held the idea of the first fast solar system identification mission by orbiting around planets. And he used their gravity to send this spacecraft with a higher speed in far points of space. Cassidy spacecraft reached Saturn by this method. Yuri Kondratik's name was forgotten. But one person remembered him. When Neil Armstrong returned from his journey to the moon, he went to Ukraine and visited childhood house of a man who made his fabulous journey possible. <laughs>